Marketing Monday, week of 831. Let's kick it off with some wins and fails. Serious wins and fails in the world of marketing and business. Starting, of course, with a fail. And this fail, of course, goes to the age-old lost concept of finders keepers, which apparently is now dead because a woman asked Crypto.com for a refund for about $68, and they accidentally gave her $7.2 million. And you'd think, finders keepers, she should be able to keep that. And she clearly thought that because immediately she transferred it to a bunch of different bank accounts, <laughs> bought a house with it, transferred ownership of the house to her sister's name. She tried every possible way to make that money. <laughs> to keep them from getting that money. Unfortunately, they did find out a whopping seven months later. They did not notice their mistake until seven months later. And then they had a court freeze the account and order her to sell the house and pay back with interest, <laughs> which I think is a little crazy. I think forcing her to pay it back with interest is crazy it's their mistake that being said if you ask for a refund of 70 dollars and you get 10 million <laughs> you should probably realize they're gonna catch on uh anyway i don't know why this court is not upholding the age-old rule of finders keepers it feels like a scam to me and that's why i'm gonna give my first fail of the week speaking of that we're just continuing that line of thought let's give a big fail to anyone who thought the crypto.com arena is gonna keep that name for the next 20 years this company lost 34 million dollars in january in a half it's laid off hundreds of employees is currently bleeding uh, stock market value and it still has to pay 700 million dollars over the next 20 years to keep the name crypto.com arena in los angeles i very much doubt that we're going to be seeing that continue and i will make the bet right here on marketing monday this thing's losing its name within a few years double fill right off the bat so let's let's switch to a win i want to give a win to the lifetimes and legacy of russian statesman mikhail gorbachev who passed away uh, this week. Again, I am not the expert on his entire life and legacy and what he did, but I do know a couple things to be true. One, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. And number two, he's probably the man single most responsible in the world for the Cold War ending peacefully. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. So he's done those two great things. That being said, his greatest achievement, if you look back at his entire life and scope of history, bringing Pizza Hut to Russia. Это Горбачев. Из-за него у нас в экономике бардак. Благодаря ему у нас новые возможности. Это из-за него у нас политическая нестабильность. Да благодаря ему у нас свобода. Да благодаря ему у нас есть писаха. За Горбачева! За Горбачева! За Горбачева! <laughs> Low-key want Pizza Hut now? Well, then it worked, all right? And it worked when he brought it to Russia. And ever since then, Russia's been good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ever since Gorbachev opened, turned down the wall and brought Pizza Hut to Russia, everything's been good. So congrats to him. Big win. But with every win must come a fail, so let me follow that up. So you guys know, I've been talking about it quite a bit. We are in a period of sustained high inflation. Prices are rising on everything from consumer goods to fuel, energy, housing. But companies, knowing that uh, consumers' paychecks are being stretched ever more thin, do not want to raise their prices, especially if they sell mass market consumer goods. So what they've been doing is this concept known as shrinkflation. This is Gatorade using the same size bottle as they used to for the same price, but with a bigger indent in the bottom. So you are getting less total fluid ounces. <laughs> shrinkflation is at all time highs. Companies are getting ever more creative with their abilities to find ways to shrink the amount of product you're getting without having to change the sticker price that you're paying. For example, fewer chips in tortilla chip bags. This guy flipped over all the bags to show that they are basically half empty. <laughs> this is what a Toblerone chocolate bar used to look like. This is what it looks like now. Twice as big gaps, smaller peaks, but same size packaging. A recurring mushroom from Yorkshire tea in Europe. It used to say extra 50% free, 240 tea bags for the price of 160. They kept it looking the same. It's extra 50 flat fee, 210 for the price of 160. You can't really notice the difference unless you look closely. This one though. <laughs> so there's the small tube of super glue and then there's the big tube. 
the big tube is literally the small tube in a plastic container and they charge more. <laughs> That's almost a win. The audacity. Look at Pringles. Old design, this size diameter, this size chip. New design, this size diameter, this size chip. The biggest casualty of a new inflationary environment, we need to have twice as much stuffing to keep up with previous generations. While boomers could enjoy a single stuffed Oreo that was thicker than this, we have to buy double stuff just to keep up. Gen Alpha is gonna need quadra stuffed Oreos just to enjoy a regular Oreo. Inflation's getting out of hand. This calls for war. <laughs> so I want you guys to keep your eyes out if you notice that prices aren't going up. If there is an inflation environment, this will absolutely happen. The one thing I'm most interested in is consumer staples like Arizona iced tea that have been adamantly against changing prices. Uh, I wonder how as prices you know continue to rise how they can maintain that i don't know it's it's impressive if they're doing it so right now arizona iced tea giga chads are taking pay cuts arizona iced tea is keeping their price the same and just cutting the profit margin they make which is giga chad move and good marketing people want to stick with them but eventually you know what i'm saying it's like when mcdonald's had the dollar menu and then changed it to the value menu pretty quickly on because they realized that calling it the dollar menu was going to them in a few years of inflation which is <laughs> exactly what happened but if you happen to be in a world where you're trying to uh track your expenses track your bills have i got a sponsor for you introducing a brand new sponsor of the stream true bill aka rocket money i would like to thank them because uh, this is true i have been a user of true bill for i think as long or longer than i've been streaming true bill is actually a fantastic product that allows you to easily cancel basically anything that you're accidentally paying for. All you have to do is put in, you know, whatever, connect your bank account or connect your PayPal, whatever. It pulls all of your subscriptions that you have, which ones are recurring, and you can easily cancel and it does the cancellation for you. I happily and highly recommend it. I was paying for so many things that I didn't know and it was just pulling it out of Quack's paycheck in, in PayPal every month. <laughs> And so it just let me instantly cancel those and it does the cancellation flow for you, which is really nice. There's also free to use. I think everything I've said so far is free to use. And then there is bonus stuff you can get for a small fee, like a paid version. Try free for now. Rocketmoney.com slash Atrioc. Here it is right here. What it looks like. Rocketmoney.com slash Atrioc. Please do it through that link so they know that I sent you. Uh, all right. Thanks for that. And back to the actual wins and fails though. Obviously that's a dub. All right. Let's give a win to the... <laughs> Should I call this a win? Well, here's how I'll surprise this. You guys love TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, how about this? You guys hate reading, right? Forget TikTok, you guys hate reading. And at the very least, we can agree that you hate reading. Well, guess what? Here's a win. More books than ever are getting banned. <laughs> Book banning has reached an all-time high. Awesome. That means more time for YouTube, more time for TikTok, more time for gaming or porn or whatever you're doing on the computer. Who needs books? Ugh, yuck. Let's keep banning them. You know what I'm saying? Ironically though, it looks like almost every book that gets banned sees a massive spike in sales. <laughs> so it's not, at the current juncture, not really working. It's a very backwards uh, thing to do. Extremely anti-intellectual and, and regressive and terrible. But at the very least, as it's happening, it is leading to actual financial gain for the books being banned. So right now, if you are an author, one of the best things you can do is get your book banned somewhere. So you can put it on these banned book lists on Amazon that all see entire spikes in sales. Now, here's a fail that I want to give. And I need your guys' help on this. At least those of you who are part of Generation Z. Any Gen Zers in chat, I'm gonna need your, your insight on this one. You see, I pay a pretty solid amount of money, according to my true bill, for subscriptions to these market research websites that send me updates on what brands and ad campaigns are doing well and what brands Gen Z prefers. And every single month that I've checked their top Gen Z brands by equity growth chart, I have seen a rise in Gen Z revealed preference for one brand. Did you guess what it is? I guess you won't. TikTok? No. AMD? No. Wells Fargo? No. Berkshire Hathaway. No. <laughs> no. You know that you always guessed it. No, not literally no one's guessed it. I'm going to tell you what it is and I want to know why. The answer, my friends, is Funyuns, <laughs> which has now reached rank three. What is Funyuns doing to win the hearts and minds of Gen Z? Because I see it rise every single month. What is going on? I don't, it's, I've had Funyuns back when I was in high school and they weren't very good. <laughs> is it Stoners? <laughs> Bro, it's called Funyuns. 
onions, not boring yins. <laughs> that doesn't answer my question. <laughs> it's a TikTok meme. So is TikTok, the way it's created many musical artists, creating a second resurgence of the old chip brand Funyuns? Give me a link that is gonna explain this to me. Three entire bags of Funyuns. Funyuns are awesome. <laughs> Uh, okay, that explains it. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, what is the Funyuns marketing team doing to raise their recommendation score month after month? What are they doing? And then it turns out they didn't do anything. <laughs> Gen Z did the work for them to sell Funyuns to themselves. Uh, so I guess that was a fail on me for not understanding and a win. Actually, that is a skill because a lesser marketing team might have tried to jump on board. Do you know what I'm saying? They might have tried to lean into it and then it would have made it not funny. Kind of like how, remember when that TikTok guy was skating around drinking cranberry out of the fucking can and then they like got on it and made like a whole fucking cranberry parody song? The ocean spray guy. Yeah, they turned into a fucking commercial and everything and then it, everyone forgot about it instantly. That's why I want to give a massive win to these kings, these financial kings that I found comparing their car payments. Sir, what is your car payment? Mine is $13.25. And what kind of vehicle is that? It's a 22 Ford Raptor. What is your car payment? $13.86. Hey, sir. What is your car payment? <laughs> Bro, bro, I love, I love bragging and comparing how much I'm giving to the dealership on a fucking lease to own brand new car that I buy every two years. What's your car payment? And what kind of car are you driving? Oh shit, what's he doing? It's kind of funny, everybody's talking about high payments. Look at that number right there. It's kind of funny, everybody out here talking about high payments. Hey. You wanna see a high payment? 15, 16 a month. Yeah, I got a fucking studio apartment in downtown. Got a payment for my car. That's my car payment. Yeah, $110,000. <laughs> I can't think of a better economic time in history to spend $110,000 on a rapidly depreciating car that I'm spending $1,500 a month on. I love that. That's fucking sick. All those high bills they were talking about don't even factor in the necessary cost for many people of all the trampolines you need. still under her car she's gonna run that over and when you run that over you need to get a new one every time so it's an expense it adds up do you understand you have to have a truck that big though i i just i don't understand how you could not if you can make a service that sort of provides a new trampoline every time someone needs to get in their car and then replaces it when it's damaged you could actually make big money also oh, sorry just watching that again her blind spot <laughs> Bro, her blind spot is fucking crazy. You could measure her blind spot in a VW Bug. This has got to kill a child a day. Yes, absolutely. Smart cars are prey and this is the predator. <laughs> I drove a truck bigger than that when I was 17. Everyone on the road around me was in an insane danger. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Uh, let's give a win to how we're gonna pay for all that stuff, dude. Cause I mean, that's expensive. Another way you could make it back is by completely abandoning all principles of investing. In the 1960s, the average investor held a stock in his portfolio for about seven or eight years. Today, the average investor holds a stock in the portfolio for four to five months, <laughs> which means they are no longer investing. This is essentially just a casino gambling. If it's four months that is not investing, a company does not meaningfully change in four months. <laughs> you aren't buy and holding. Didn't you just sell? After years, after eight years, I sold my earliest Amazon. Book, book, book. <laughs> The dream is flipping Barnes and Noble options at 2 a.m. and shouting book, book, book. <laughs> Big win. Time for a huge win, okay? I figured out a way, a foolproof way. Even in these tur turbulent times, I have got you guys a pure financial way to win big in the stock market. Get your notepad out. Guaranteed success. Actually, I'm not even joking. If you do what I'm about to say, you are almost guaranteed to make money in the stock market. All you have to do is get elected to Congress and join one of these house committees <laughs> because they have officially ranked them by their return on stock trades. 
And if you are in the House Natural Resources Committee, the average return on your stock trade is 54%. You are like quadrupling the S&P 500 average. You are crushing the market. You're beating Warren Buffett. Somehow, for some reason, some lucky reason, everybody on this committee just happens to be a fucking stock market genius. And then if you're down here on the oversight committee, you're not doing so good. Weird. It's weird that the committee that's in charge of overseeing legality of other things is not doing so well. And then these less uh, overseen committees are doing so well. How interesting. House administration broke, dude. <laughs> Losing money. I think the best takeaway here is that we should elect more people like this because they're great traders. And we should obviously get these guys out because, uh, excuse me, broke talk. Uh, and with that, thank you for watching Wins and Fails. Uh, all right. Adios, amigos. Bye. Buena vista. Buena suerte. You get it. <laughs>